It's the details that make your pages extra special. Hi, I'm your host, Julie Faithan Balzer, and today on Scrapbook Soup, we'll add lots of great details, and I'll wrap things up with some great new ideas. But first, let's head over to Christine Drumheller, who's at the sewing machine. Yes. I know, and you brought a really cool page, which at first I didn't notice the stitching on because you used white thread on here. Right, I like to I like to keep things subtle, but I love adding texture to my pages. And the way that I can do that is by using the tone on tone effect. So what I did is I went with the white thread on top of lighter colored papers, but you do still see it, especially when you go across some of these uh, more patterned papers and a little bit brighter papers. And then I also added just a little bit on the tag right on the photo. So it just kind of pops that up a little bit, gives it a little extra texture. So you're actually doing a lot of different kinds of stitching. You're stitching through lots of layers of photos, you're stitching on like a slick surface surface like a yeah. photo and you're going to show us how how easy it is to do because I'm a little nervous about putting that paper through the sewing no, machine. No, not at all. It's super, super easy. And uh, what we started out with is I just added some layers of pattern paper. Did you put adhesive under here? Because what about yeah. adhesive and your sewing machine? Uh, what I try to do is keep the adhesive away from where that sewing needle is going to go through. It will gum up your needle a little bit, so you want to be careful with that. So, so example, right here, um, I can see where the thread line is. Where would you have put the adhesive on these pieces of paper? Just on the, just right, you can do one stripe right down the middle and just stick it down. And again, with the background, you do want to put some adhesive down first, though, because when you're sewing, sometimes those two pages can can move around on you, and you don't want that to happen. So I just I did some simple stitching, border stitching. But one of the fun things that you can do when you have a pattern paper, emphasize the pattern by running a stitch along that pattern, and that's what we did on that one there. Okay, and you're going to show us how to do yeah. that. And for the sake of everybody's eyes, we've actually put some darker thread into the right. machine so we can all see it. Yep. So I'm so going to just do you do you, are there any rules about starting just to create a knot? Do you have to do anything like that? No, you just you basically just put your uh, you can if you wanted to if you're a little nervous about where to start, you can actually make a little tick mark with your pencil. Mm -hmm. But I you know with something like this, I'm not going to be precise. I'm just going to just go with it. So I'm so, going to actually okay. follow this line here. So I see you put your foot down and then you use the hand wheel to go ahead and put that needle down yep. into there. And then I'm just going to follow this along. So Christine, whenever you're stitching, um, are you using the same stitch length and needle that you would for fabric? Exactly. There's nothing different. There's no difference from going on fabric to going on paper. Okay, because obviously with paper, I would be worried about perforating it somehow so that it would rip. No, not at all. It's it goes through it and adheres it together just like you would stitch normal fabric. It's it's a lot of fun and it adds good texture. And I can see that when you turn the corner there, you obviously stopped, turned the paper, mm -hmm. and by having that needle down in there, it allowed you to pivot perfectly where you wanted to be. Yep. And we're gonna just follow another one. And the other thing that I see you doing, which I do all the time too, is when you have those little tails coming out of the machine, you want to arrange them and sort of pull them away from what you're doing so that they don't end up getting caught underneath. Right, because that can, that can mess up your, your line a little bit. And again, you're just pulling up the foot, rotating it around the needle, and then you're going to go ahead. And people always think that a sewing machine is somehow crazy, but you have to remember that you're the driver, right? You're in control exactly. of how fast you it's going. Exactly, adjust the speed. That's exactly right. Okay, cool. So let's pull it out and show me how you um, cut off the excess threads here. Um, actually, you just with a pair of scissors, one of the tricks that you can do is if you flip it over and pull it up, you can pull that little loop right through. Oh, to the back. Yep. If you want to so leave the clever. little pieces hang off, you can. If you want more texture. That could be a decorative touch, exactly. but I see what you're saying is if you just There's sort of a yank at right it, there, you can get you the can loop and up. then I can see it right here. That means that your sides are going to come up and then you have them both at the back. You can obviously tie it in a knot. Yeah. Now, I know that in the past sometimes when I've sewn on like really thin paper, I do try to make a slightly longer stitch length just so that it doesn't completely, you know, it's if it's really, really bitty, I think you end up in yes. trouble sometimes. Or with vellum, you want to be real, a little more careful with that really delicate paper or something right. like that. And if you're sewing anything like uh, chipboard, anything that's thicker like mm -hmm. that, take your time. 
you don't want to go through because you can break a needle that way. So okay, you that's take a your great time. tip. And yeah. I know that you have one here, which already has all that beautiful stitching added right along there. I can feel it. I can see it. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have also now added your title, yep. your tag, and this photo along with uh, this sentiment, right? Yes. Yep. Now, can you talk to us a little bit about stitching on a photo? Because it's a slick surface, and I've had trouble in the past trying to stitch on a photo. Adhere it down first because it's going to move around a little bit. But I think if you just take your time, sometimes even with thicker things like this, if you move the needle up and down by hand as opposed to using the foot pedal, you can really adjust the, the speed and, and get through those thicker, slick things a little easier. And I know now you're gonna help us finish off this layout with something really special. Yes, and first of all, one of the fun things to do when you do stitch, it's stuck down, so you can really play with things. So if you wanna add just a little bit of texture, you can crumple up these edges and give them a little bit more texture and move That reminds them me of like when you're cutting fringe or something out of fabric, yeah. it would naturally do that, but with the paper, you're manipulating it. And you don't have to worry about, that's stuck down, it's stitched, it's not going anywhere. But what I wanna do is I wanna add this little embellishment. So I'm gonna take a stamp, a nice circle stamp, because it's gonna also mimic, whenever you add embellishments, try and mimic things that are in your photos to to carry on that theme. And he is in a swing tire, so I wanted to use a circle stamp. I know, I was gonna say, he's in a swing tire, the tag has a little circle. Right. Even the font you chose for the title is very circle-y. And another tip is I'm stamping on a patterned paper. It's a subtle patterned paper, but it still gives it a little bit more than just plain white. Yeah, great visual interest. Now you're turning your paper punch upside down. Yes, that yes. That is so smart because you can see exactly, exactly where you're punching. Exactly, I can line it up perfect. And then just punch that out. And then it's just a simple matter of tucking those in. You wanna line up your words so that they go where, where, so you can read the sentiment there on that stamp. And then you're just gonna simply add a couple more round circle embellishments. And you would glue, I would glue those down with, with, a, with a heavy adhesive, a liquid mm -hmm. adhesive, and then you end up with the, with the final. There's so many fabulous design things here, Christina. I mean, besides the fact that you're obviously mimicking the circles, you see the visual triangle of the brown colors that pull you right into the photo. Mm -hmm. I mean, just really, really smart design. And I, and I wanna show off some of the other stitch projects Thank that you. you brought with us, because they're beautiful. I love how you stitch on the vellum, which you had mentioned before as being a little bit more delicate. That's a little more delicate. You wanna take your time with that, yeah. And now if we go to this next project here, I can see this is a lot of free form stitching where you're not trying to do exact lines, but it's adding beautiful texture. If I can just follow it around here, you can see how that background is well, created. And again, what we're doing is we're trying to draw that inspiration from that photo. He's throwing leaves, there's, there's a whimsy, there's, there's motion going on. So use the thread to create that same motion. And you've also got some of that wonderful whimsical stitching you can see with the red stitch line going through. I mean, so many great ways of getting that stitch on there. Yeah. 